so happy. You know how that goes. You know, you get motivated and so on and so forth. But as soon as you leave, that's done. So when you equip somebody, that means that they are dealing with whatever it is that you're teaching. They internalizing it, and that will last. Difference between training somebody and just having somebody do something for five minutes. So my job is to equip you. But in order for me to do that, you have to listen. You have to consider what the word of God is saying. You have to weigh it out. You know, you just can't listen. And by nature, we do that, of course. But um, my daughter was telling me, because she's doing some, uh, some social media stuff on my messages, and she said, you know, Dad, what, now that I'm doing that, I have to listen to that message again. And she said, when I listen to it again, I hear things I did not hear when you said them. And that's why I always encourage people, man, you got you, you to gotta go back and listen to these messages. You have to be able to, 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 to ask Holy Spirit to help you. Otherwise, you'll hear it. And the way the brain works, guess what? 98% of what you heard is lost. Right? So I take this serious. I ask you to take it serious too because the only reason you're here is to hear something from the Lord that's going to help you because this life is a trip. Amen. Do you agree? Yes. Today's message, uh, the title is Our True Identity. Our True Identity. Are you all ready? Yes. Again, the same three people. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Um, today, and I guess... It's been for a long time, but it seems more like today we are suffering with an identity crisis. People don't even know who they are. I mean, they, you know, you can refer to somebody uh, uh, and say, you know, hi, Mr. So-and-so, and they'll say, no, I'm not a mister. Are y'all here? I mean, it's an identity crisis. People don't know who they are. You know, and, and, and I get it because in the world, that's the way it is. The world is, is uh, the Bible refers to this world system as Babylon. And Babylon means confusion. People get confused. They don't know who they are. They, they listen to stuff and they allow somebody else to, uh, to, to give them identity. But not believers, right? Because the kingdom of God, we should know who we are. But a lot of times we find out that we don't because uh, one of the one of the I've been talking about um, I've been talking about, you know, not looking to the past. Right. Yeah. And and this is tied into that, because when we look to the past, what we're doing is we're looking to our old identity. The Bible says that we are changed from glory to glory. So it, it was, uh, say with me, somebody's trying to hit my password. So, so glory to glory and faith to faith means you're moving forward, Amen. right? You don't go from glory to glory. No, you go from glory to glory, Amen. right? So when you look back, what you're doing is you're looking at the old you, your old experience. Are y'all here? Right. So we can't do that. Otherwise, we will get stuck. So we have to know who we are because our identity is present. Yes. Come on. Yes. Right. The Bible says it. If any man be in Christ, you are a new creation right now. All things are passed away. So you can't go back. You can't look back. If, if you look back, all you're doing is looking at your old identity, and you're not your past, my friend. Amen. So Genesis, we're going to start there, very familiar scripture. Uh, chapter 1, verse 26. This is uh, God um, getting ready to create man. He says, then God said, 
Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. So stop there a minute. Because this is mind boggling. The God of the universe is saying, let's make man in our own image. That is crazy. If you stop to think of it, and, 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 and really, if you don't ask Holy Spirit to help you with the word, you'll read stuff like this and it'll just go. Because it's so incredible that, that your mind will work against you. Your mind will shut down at stuff like this and you don't even know it. Because it is so incredible that God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that he would say, let us make man in our own image. Come on. Why would he do that? Well, it's pretty simple because if you continue uh, to read there, it says that according to our likeness, let them have dominion. And the only way, friend, that we can have dominion is if we are like him. And he, he, he didn't say, let us make man and give him dominion. It does not work. Dominion comes and authority comes from him. And he is saying, uh, let, let us make man in our own image and according to our own likeness. Somebody once said, who, who is he talking to? To himself. Yeah. Holy Spirit was there. The son was there. It's what we call the Trinity. So when he said us, it's, it's, you're, you're talking about the Holy Spirit. Y'all get this now. Because when he's saying in, in our likeness, he's saying in the Father's likeness, in the Son's likeness, in the Holy Spirit's likeness. So this is the way this whole thing started. By him saying in order for them to have dominion, they have to be like us. But what was sad is a lot of people don't grab this because they're looking at themselves. And they go like, that ain't me. People that go like, I know me. This is me. Well, that was you until you became a Christian. That's what the Bible says. But the only reason that we don't receive that and accept that is because we're too busy looking at our human self and our weaknesses and all that kind of stuff, and it doesn't add up to what he is saying. Hey. But the Bible never asks you to, to just agree to what he's saying. The Bible says become what he is saying. Hey. Okay, y'all need to listen because this is about to get deeper. Amen? So, Everyone has an identity from God because he made us in his image. But only believers have an identity that's been given to us by him, son and daughter. Come on. Uh, uh, people that don't know the Lord, they can't say that. They can't say, you know, hey, how you doing? Who are you? I'm a son of God. Well, right away, you religious devil, you, you know. Really. And you, don't, you don't have to go around saying that, but you have to know it. Right? You, you have to know your identity. You have to know who you are, who you really are. Not who you think you are, or not who people uh, think you are, or, or, or the things that people have said about you. You're not your past experience. You're not any of that. You who God says you are. And only you can determine that. Only you can determine that. When you want to be defined by people, you're in a dangerous route. Because you will be miserable because you're always somebody that you're really not. Come on. You know how sometimes we go around people and we, 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 we want to be a certain way depending on who they are? Come on. And, and that doesn't help. I mean, you can do it if you want to. And you will, you will feel okay at the time. But you will feel miserable because you're confused. So our true identity is what? Present. 
This is what Jesus uh, uh, is said about Jesus in John chapter 13 in verse 3. Watch it. It says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Stop here. Stop there. Now, if we were made in his image, it's kind of important to know who Christ was because who he is, so are we, the Bible says, on the earth. Oh, you're not hearing me. Again, it just goes like this for many people. Why? Because they cannot identify with something so amazing. Come on. But why do you think Jesus came and why do you think that he was an example as he walked the earth? It's because Jesus is the express image of an invisible God. That's what the Bible says. So if you want to know who God is, you know who Jesus is. Come on. So here he is walking and doing all kinds of stuff, and he is saying, this is what a son does. But now look at his attitude. Jesus knowing, and that's key, because most people don't know who they are. Jesus did. He says, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. The first thing that we have to understand about our identity is that the Father has given us everything. And we know that there's a, an identity crisis in the church, not our church alone, but in church in general. Why? Because people are always praying to God to get something. When they pray all the time for God to give them something, they don't know who they are. Yeah, if my son or my daughter or even my grandkids, more importantly, if they come to me and, and, and say, you know, dad... Can I get something from the fridge? How dare you ask that? Because you know whatever's, whatever's in there is yours. Whatever is mine is yours. Come on. And so when, when, when we, if, if it says that he has given everything uh, to Jesus and put it in his hands, if you want a, a, another reference, the Bible says in Ephesians that he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies not that he will but that he has one of the problems again with uh, with a lack of identity is that we always look to the past to be defined and we're always living in the past you know when we pray that's the way we pray like we pray someday i'll be free someday I will prosper. Someday I will be healed. Come on. And, and that, that is showing you that you still are not equipped with your true identity. Because when you know who you are, just like it says, that him knowing that God had given him all things into his hands and that he had, has come from God. Where you come from? Well, you know, I come from my parents wrong <laughs> come on you have come from your heavenly father he's the one that has created man in his image in his likeness and we are when we have come from that lineage are you all here right so that's again that's how you define your identity by defining where you come from People always ask me, where are you from? I'm from the New York. You know, I identify with that. Born and raised in New York City. But that's not who I am. Oh, you're not here. Right? I, I, am, I am a believer. I have come from my father. And so, when did that happen? In 1979, when I became born again. And again, that, that's part of the problem because people even use that. I'm born again, but you still, you. You ain't trying to help me today. Huh? Yeah. You know, I was born again in, in, in 1985, yet I'm still me. 
So what's the point of being born again? Born again simply means that you have been given an opportunity to regain your true identity in Christ. You can't say things like, I'll just do me. Well, well if you're going to do you, what's the point of being born again? <laughs> Don't you remember that you being you is the, what, what led you to come to Christ in the begin, to begin with? And you still want to do you? Oh, you ain't hearing me. No, you don't want to do you. You want to do him. Then you'll have success. Then you'll have peace. Then you'll have joy. you have all the things that come from being made in his image and his likeness. So notice what it says. And that he had come from God and was going back to God. It's pretty simple. We lose sight of this whole thing. We forget that, that, that the only reason that we are alive is because of God. The only reason you're on the earth is because of the Lord. We come from him. We are blessed people because he made us in his image and his likeness. And he has given us everything that we possibly can need. Come on. So what's happening right now? What's happening right now is called a paradigm shift here. And only you can allow it or you can fight it. Come on. Because, because all we know is the old identity. That's what we, we hold on to even though it doesn't work. But it's because we've been that way for so long that that's all we know. And, and, and it's scary to take a leap of faith into something that, that does, has nothing to do with your emotions or what you can see or what you can feel. That is called faith. Hello? Now, I know you're listening by how quiet you are. <laughs> so, so we have to know that this life is simple. You were placed here by God. He has given you everything. And one day, you're going to go back to God. That's the way it works. So in between is, is the problem because in between the time we got saved to the, to the time we go to be with the Lord, we think it's up to us to get and to do everything that he has already given us. So we're confused. Okay. And when you're confused, you can't have the proper image or the proper identity. Because we will always be like, you know, well, someday things will change. No, my friend, things changed 2,000 years ago. Ever before you were thought of, of being on this earth. So if, if resurrecting again, which simply means that what he did, he restored what Adam lost. Come on. Because, because Adam was the one that lost his true identity. After they ate of the fruit, he acted totally different. Though he had dominion, now he was afraid and he went and he hid. Come on, somebody. The Bible says he covered himself. He hid because he was afraid. So he lost his identity. He, he didn't look at the father the same way that, that he looked at him before they messed up. And then the Bible in Corinthians refers to Jesus as the last Adam. So it says the last Adam came and he restored what the first Adam lost. Yes. Are you all here? Yes. So when he restored that on the cross, when he resurrected, he said, now this is who you are again. You have everything. The Bible says that Jesus became poor so that we may become what? Rich. He has given us everything. Our biggest battle is not against Satan, and so it's the way we think. Hello? And, and God knows that's a, that's, a, that's a battle. So now watch. This is what's interesting. Next, next verse. So he, knowing that, he rose from supper and laid aside, aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself What do you think he did next? Wash the disciples' feet. In other words, if he wasn't secure in his identity, he can never do that. 
because he is God in the flesh. And it's like the reason I can bend down and, 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 and again, pride is one of the biggest hindrances to your identity. Because pride, you're trying to protect somebody that you're not. Come on. So in order for him to be able to do that, God himself, God, this is another mind-blowing thing. Why Jesus Christ, he's going to bow down and wash the disciples' feet. But the only way he can do it is because he knew, come on somebody, he knew where he came from. He knew, he knew that he had everything. He, he, he had no lack. And he knows where he was going. Secure in his identity. And then Peter goes, oh, what are you doing? Uh, don't wash my feet. Uh, God forbid. Man, man, shut up, you insecure person, you. <laughs> really. You know. And so when we know who we are, we're not afraid of being humble. We're not afraid of, of, of people taking advantage of us. And sometimes people, they, 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 they trip me out because they go like, oh my God, how, how can you allow that? Well, the fact that I can allow it simply means I'm still in control. Come on. But I'm not going to let nobody uh, 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 make me do something I don't want to do. Come on. Right? Why? Because I've learned to be secure in who I am. Yes. Nobody defines me. Yes. No circumstance defines me. Come on. I am defined by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's it. Are y'all still here? So. It's why... There's a demand for us to do things that we feel we can't do. You can't do it in your current identity. And that's why it's important when Jesus, you know, the Bible says that uh, um, Paul said that the mystery that people still miss today. He said there's a mystery that they still miss today. And that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, that's the battle. If Christ is in you, 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 you know, you're also there. So the battle is either to let your true identity flow through Christ in you, or you, or you do it yourself. There's some people, man, that are so boxed in. They, they've been hurt before. They've gone through changes. They've had bad experiences, so they box themselves in to protect themselves. Can I, can I talk today? What's up, chief? So, so they, they think that that's the way they should live. Ain't nobody going to take advantage of me no more. No, ain't nobody going to do this no more. Okay, but you are locked in. That's not freedom. Are you with me? That's not freedom because you think you're protecting yourself, but you're also stopping the blessing of God to come in. And that's why Jesus never did that. He, he stood vulnerable. They, they did all kinds of stuff. They burned him. They, and he stood vulnerable to the very end, even on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they do. Come on. And, and why is because we're trying to protect an identity that is not real. Thank you, Jesus. Zechariah. Too bad y'all don't have Bibles. I would tell you to turn there and you will fake it like you. Oh, yeah, here it is. Trust me, I've done that before. When we used to have the Bibles, the guy would say, turn to Job. And I'm like, oh, man. The pressure's on. I couldn't find it. And I just leave it on John and, and act like I got. <laughs> Amen. Watch. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1, it says. No, no. Zechariah. Hmm. 
Man, just, just when I thought, you know, Junior is on the money, he done slipped big time. So I'll, I'll give you an hour to get there. Meantime, I'll read it here. It says, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem. Ah, okay. And Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. Next verse. We're stuck again. And then it says, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Not, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, no, sorry, three. Now Joshua was, was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Now, think about it. Because the Bible identifies him as the high priest. Yet the high priest has filthy garments. You're not here. And he goes before the Lord because the Bible says in Isaiah that even our righteousness... Our righteousness that comes from our identity, it's like filthy rags. Come on. And so he, he goes before the, the Lord in, in filthy rags. And the next verse says, if we can get it. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, see, I have removed your iniquity. This is prophetic about even the people that will come to God without thinking that they, that they did everything right. And yet to God, it was filthy. There was nothing, my friend, there's nothing you can do to be right with God. Nothing. I mean, you can fast for 50 days more than Jesus, and that still would not make you, come on, right with God. He has made it to where he has taken that responsibility away from us so that we won't think that we can do it in our own strength. And that's the problem. Some people that they know they have issues, they go like, hey, well, you know, uh, uh, God is not pleased with me. Well, if he's not pleased with you, he's not pleased with me, he's not pleased with anybody. Because God does not, come on, he does not base how he feels about, about you or how he sees you based on what you do. So it says that, uh, and to him he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with what? rich robes that is the robe of righteousness how did he remove his iniquity again that's prophetic through the blood of Jesus are you still with me see we, we will always live a life underneath what God has intended for us because we're still trying to live it according to our own identity, according to our own feelings and emotions. And, and we're going like, I, I, God is mad at me because I did this. Oh, he's pleased with me because I did this. Wrong. Wrong. That's not the way it works. That he has made you in his image, in his likeness. He loves you. He believes in you. He's blessed you with all. That. And somebody goes, well, you know, someday I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. Somebody just said, that's a cult right now. <laughs> no, you're not going to die. Jesus says, whoever believes in me will never die. Because you think that this life is final and is not. My friend, the life is but a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. Our rightful place is in the kingdom of God. Come on, y'all here. Right. And we place so much emphasis on this life. And then we hear about people, kids 
that, that stuff happened to kids and, and other people and they, they're gone, they, 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 the car crash or whatever the case may be and you go like, oh my God. Oh, listen, eternity is our lot. Don't forget it. Always have an eternal perspective. That's why it says about Jesus, he knew where he came from, he knows where he's going. All of the rest is fluff and we get stuck on the fluff. We worry about the fluff. We get depressed behind the fluff. It's true. I, I know I'm messing some of y'all up. <laughs> You're looking at me like. Mm. But watch it. He does that. And then it says, the next verse, if we have it. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head. And they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. by. So the turban in the Hebrew is a royal crown. You remember, right, the story of the prodigal son when he was out there acting, my man. He was acting all, all crazy and, 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 and spent everything, and he was afraid to come back to the father, and then he, but he was eating slop pig slop and he said man if I go to my father's house as a slave it'll be better than this and then so he goes with that mentality but the father never changed the way he felt about him because of what he did y'all are not here you know the father didn't say man he went spent all my money messed up don't you dare come over here and if you do come over here you're going to be worse than a slave that would be me that would be my attitude I'm not going to say you, because then you'll get mad at me, so I'll just say me. <laughs> Come on. So, so, you know, he comes, and the father looks at him, and man, he gets happy. He says, come on, let's have a party. And, and bring the robe, and bring the sandals. And, and, I mean, he just treated him like royalty. Amen. Now you know how God feels about you at your worst. You may not feel good about yourself, but that's your identity. It's not the identity he has given you. He has given you the identity as a son. You can feel like crap, but that's not the way he feels. Come on. Because all he's waiting is for you to know who you are. Because the minute that he saw him, this is what he said. He said, my son was one lost, but now he is found. The key word, son. Come on. Are, are y'all getting anything out of this? All right. Okay. You just gave me permission to continue. So that's why Paul is big on, on our image. In Romans uh, chapter 8, 28, we know the scripture real good. Oh, uh, Romans eight twenty eight. Lord have mercy. And we know that all things work for the good. Come on, to them who love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. Here it is: for whom He did foreknow. Hmm. He also predestined to what? To be conformed to the image of his son. Now, you want to know what your journey is? Well, of course, we all think our journey is to get a house, to make money, to do this. I mean, today's world, that's, that's what drives us. Before I retire, I got to have all these things. And, and, and that's our driving force. And in and, and, and all of that, which we try to accomplish with our own identity, we miss the call of God and the purpose you got saved. The purpose you got saved, my friend, is so that you, he has predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And, and, and so, yeah, that's why people that have their goal in life and their journey is to have something that they've been after for a long time. And once they get it, they find out they're still not happy. Are y'all here? And that's why people, they hit the lotto and they say, ah! And then they end up getting divorced. They go, all kind of stuff happens. Why? Because that is not our journey. The Bible says we have all things already. So you can just start thanking God that you're blessed. But don't make that the thing that you're going after. That's why the Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. In the meantime, we're chasing all the things. It takes our time. We can't fellowship. People don't go to church. Why? Because they're going after things. And the reason they go after things is because their identity is, is, is mixed in those things. When they get something they finally want, they feel happy. Why? Because they feel, I've accomplished my identity. You ever talk to men, especially men? <laughs> The women, get them. <laughs> I heard you. So the men, right, they come together. Hey, hi, my name is Robert. Hey, huh, what you do for a living? In other words, they're saying, what is your identity? See, y'all not here. So if I'm working at McDonald's, I'm a lie. Even though that's not the case, but I'm saying when you operate on that in that level, right? This guy says, oh, yeah, I'm a professor at a, so, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I work at McDonald's. And you feel like crap. Why? Because you think that's your identity. And they will treat you like crap because they think that's who you are. So then we lie, right? And it's what we do, my friend. Most people don't know who they are because they don't want to be who they are. Come on. No, it's the truth. And so I remember real quick. Is the time on? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was working with Catholic Charities, and, um, and really, man, God gave me favor in that place. I elevated up. I was still in ministry, but I, I took that as a side thing, and, and, and man, I became a, a right underneath the main uh, supervisor, the director, and they had a thing going on. It was drug prevention. That's what I worked in, and they had a thing going on in Washington, and they invited the guy. His name was Dr. Hendershot. They invited him to go and to be part of the symposium. It was supposed to be a drug prevention person a psychologist and a sociologist. They wanted to address the drug issue from those three components. And so he told me, he said, man, Robert, I can't go, but I want you to go in my place. And I'm like, he said, they're going to pay everything, flight, you know, hotel, whatever. And man, I, but I'm kind of bold like that. I've always, I, I thought I have nothing to say, but I'll do it. And so I remember went to, to D.C. and beautiful hotel. And, and um, when I got there, we got there late. And, man, you had the suits. You know what I mean by the suits? Yeah, you had the suits and you had, and I, and I was in jeans and this thing. And um, this other guy came, hey, Robert, how you doing? And he introduced me. And, and the way they looked at me. They looked at me up and down. Man. They didn't even fake it. You know, they, who is this bum? Yeah. Oh, you're not here. Yeah. So it's funny because then I go upstairs, I go into my room, and I get dressed. I come back down. They treat me different. Everything is about identity. Yeah. And, and I remember uh, the first guy went up the psychologist, and he was uh, quoting all this kind of stuff, and man, and you know, the reason this and that, and you know, psychologically, blah, blah, blah. Then they call the sociologist, and he gets up, and yes, it's about, you know, uh, where we come from, and all, you know, where we were raised, and the ghetto, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm sitting there thinking, what am I gonna say? 
No, it's true. And I thought, you know, Lord, just give me a few words that sound intelligent. <laughs> I'll just work those and repeat that maybe five times. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, do you realize why you're here? Because I was trying to be somebody I was not just because I wanted to fit in. Is anybody here? He said, you're here to give me glory. So I got up and I said, first thing I'm going to tell you is that you ought to be glad that I'm a changed man because I will be in the parking lot right now taking all of your radios, all of your stuff. <laughs> and they busted out laughing. And I said, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a sociologist. I am someone that was a dauphin in the streets of New York and God changed my life. Man, listen, I, I had their attention and I just went on to talk about that the only way a life can change is by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. After I was done, they gave me a standing ovation. Now, can you imagine if I would have been like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, and talking stuff I don't even know? The Lord said, be who I made you to be. Are y'all here? You have to be who God made you to be. You're special in his eyes. You're the apple of, it, of, of his eye. I mean, he has positioned you and put something in you that's, that's just for you. Somebody says, hey, you, know, you know, potential. People talk about potential. Potential means nothing. Do you know how many people are in the grave that had great potential? Oh, you're not hearing me. Potential means nothing because everybody has potential. The ones who will experience their potential. Now that's the difference. Okay, I'm almost done. Don't say amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Oh, come on now. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being what? Transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. These are powerful scriptures I would recommend to you to write them down, put, them in your, put it in your phone and so on, and go back to it. Because Paul, what he's saying is a man that, an apostle that did ex extraordinary things, he is saying, I'm still looking in the mirror. But notice what he says. But with, what? But we are with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror, and that's the key. This is, there's a story in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, when Moses would go to meet God up in the mountain and he would be transfigured. He would be shining from being in the presence of the Lord. And, 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 and they would look at him like, what in the world? But the Bible says that he would put a covering. He would cover his face when he came down to the people. And I always thought, well, that was, that's a humbling thing. But then Paul picks it up in the New Testament and he tells us why he did it. It's because he knew that that glory and that glow will fade. And he didn't want them to see it fading. He had a mask on. Oh, you all here. And, and that's what we do. We wear masks. You know what I'm talking about. You wear the mask that you think is right for that situation. You know, people that are, quote, spiritual, you know, they, they, they don't want you to see them for who they are. Like, I go to the bathroom just like everybody else. Yeah, I watch TV just like everybody else. 
I don't eat right sometimes just like everybody else. I get angry. But, you know, no, no. That's why we decided to call this church Real Life Church. Be you. Be yourself in Christ. But he will wear a mask. Hey. So he says, but we all with unveiled face, take the mask off. And for the Spanish folks, quítate la máscara. That's an old song. Really, Spanish song. Got to take the mask off. You can't go to God pretending that you're somebody you're not. Why? He already knows who you are. Oh, celestial father, thou art. And we start King James prayers. (laughs) Just be who you are. God knows you. He, he knows your attitude. He created you. I go to God sometimes and, and, and I talk to him like, you know, I'm talking to somebody I know. There you go. Thank you. So he says that when you look in that mirror, you're seeing the glory of God. Didn't he say that? When you go to the mirror, seeing the glory of God. Somebody, oh, you mean I see God's picture? No, it's you. You are the glory of God. He has made you in his image, in his likeness. When he sees you, he doesn't see your issues. He doesn't see your problems. He doesn't see your mistakes. He doesn't see your fear. He sees himself. How dare we live below who he made us to be? Come on. I'm not saying this. It's not my idea. I'm not that smart. It's what the word of God says. Seeing the glory of God, of the Lord. And that's how we are transformed. You're transformed, my friend, when you are totally convinced that you are made in his image and likeness. That when you look in the mirror, you not only see yourself, because most people are even afraid to look in the mirror because they don't like what they see. Many people look in the mirror and they see defeat. They see weakness. Come on, somebody. They see all those things. And whatever you see, that's who who you're going to be. He says, when you look in the mirror, in the mirror of your mind, you see me because you're my glory. Yeah, but I don't deserve it. Exactly. And that's the beauty of it. That we don't deserve it. And that we are a mess. But yet he said, That's why my son will go on the cross and shed his blood and suffer and rise again because you couldn't. That's the good news. You know what salvation is? Can y'all give me a few more minutes? Salvation is when we remember who we are. Yeah, yeah, my, my, my take on salvation is different than a lot of folks. Because they'll tell you, you know, are you saved now? And yeah, now you, you, know, you won't do anything wrong. Baloney. Because if I couldn't do anything wrong, I don't need to be saved. <laughs> no, salvation, my friend. Now notice when it says he made man in his image and his likeness. Right? That means from that point on, every man and woman and child has been made in his likeness and in his image. They just don't know it. When somebody gets saved, it's when you help them to remember who they really are. When you help them to remember you've been made in the image of God and in his likeness. Oh, come on. The only difference between us and folks out in the world is that we remember and think about the word remember. 
we have been remembered. Because remember, the Bible talks that, that the body of Christ is what? It's the body. But some have dismembered themselves. And when you know who you are and you get saved, you remember. <sighs> so much going. So the children of Israel, God loves them. The reason that he took them out of Egypt, why? Is because he saw, he saw himself in them and, and he brought them out. And I'm taking you to the promised land. That's who God is. He's a blesser. Take you into the promised land, flows with milk and honey, got you. I got you covered. Come on. Why would I do that? Because you were created to have dominion, not to be in slavery. That's why he did it. So when they get there, they send 12 spies, and the 12 spies look around, and whoo, this land is awesome, except there are giants in the land. And so you come to church and you hear a nice promise or, you know, and so you go like, yeah, no, yeah I'm going to move forward. Yeah, I heard that word. I'm going to move forward. Boom, giants. That's in there for us. And then we freak out. But wait a minute. But, but he said, the prophet said, this and that. Why are these giants there? They're there for a purpose. Because first of all, there ain't no giant here or in hell that can stop you someone who is in the image and the likeness of God but why are they there because you have to go to another level of faith to enjoy the promised land but they couldn't do it and then in Hebrews it tells us why it says that they could not enter in Come on. Number one, because they did not mix the prophetic word with faith. And two, in, in, in Deuteronomy it tells us that they saw themselves as grasshoppers. Say image. Image is important. How you see yourself is super important. How you see yourself will determine whether you will receive all that God has for you or not. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. You're the man in the mirror. You're the woman in the mirror. And it says, and they saw themselves, hear it, they saw themselves as grasshoppers. And so the enemy saw them that way too. Watch it. So what, what am I trying to say? The way you see yourself will determine if you will walk in the glory of God or the lies of the enemy. Because it says that they saw themselves that way and then the enemy saw them that way. The enemy will always see you as you see yourself. So when you say, you look in the mirror and say, I'm poor, the enemy says, you're darn right you are. You're not here. If any two shall agree, if you say, I'm not going to make it, <laughs> you're right, you're not going to make it. He, it's not him putting that in you. He's just agreeing with you. Nothing is ever going to change. You darn right is not. I'm using darn just to be nice. Seriously. You darn right, you're not, nothing's going to change. Forget about what that preacher says. Forget about what you read in the Bible. Nothing is going to change. And then he says, I didn't say it, you did. Because what you're saying is what you see, what you feel. Come on. Right? And that becomes your identity. You can have a defeatist mindset, and it's not the devil. That's your identity. There are people that are afraid, are afraid to succeed. Come on. They will actually sabotage success because their identity is in failure. Oh, Lord, I need to stop. I, 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 I need to, uh, let me see. I've already gone over one minute. 
I done lied to y'all. But watch. How is it possible? There's only one way. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. People try to please God by their actions, doing things, whatever. No, no. Unless it's done by faith, it doesn't please God. It's only one thing that pleases God, and that's faith. And I'm going to tell you why. Because apart from faith, you will fail all the time. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. I'm going to go through this quickly. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. Let me stop there a minute. We are a soul winning church. Say it with me. We are a soul winning church. That's what we believe in. We believe in reaching people, reach your family, reach your cousin, bring your dog to church next Sunday. I don't care. Maybe, maybe the dog will get saved. But that's who we are. But notice what Paul says. We are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. And that's the key. You may see people a different way. God sees them another way. You may see people like, man, I don't like that dude. You know the way, the way God sees them? I died for that dude. Yeah, yeah, I don't like this person. And God says, but I love him. And if you allow me, I will work through you and love that person. Anyway, that's a freebie right there. So he says, uh, we implore you on, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Next verse. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This is awesome. I'll tell you, write these scriptures down. They'll help you later. So what he's saying is that, that Jesus became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. And the only way that you can be righteous, my friend, is not by what you do or don't do. It's by faith, believing that what he did on the cross, he did it for you. And though you, don't, you may not like yourself or you may not like what, what, what you did or any kind of stuff like that, you have to realize that he sees you as righteous. And you had nothing to do about it. Nothing. And that's why religious people are tripped because they think what they do qualifies them to be righteous. And Jesus called those people a bunch of snakes. Hello? But the bottom line is you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's your identity. That's who you are. That's why you can look in the mirror and feel good about yourself, even though emotionally you may not feel good about yourself. But it's not about your emotions. Uh. Romans 3, 22. Quickly, quickly. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe for there is no difference. So the only difference is those who don't believe and those who believe. But notice what he says. The righteousness of God through faith. Yes. Our issue, my friend, is that we're human. We've been human for way too long. And we only know how to operate from a human standpoint. We come to Christ and it's a spiritual thing, a uh, 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 totally uh, uh, a spiritual move of God in your life, but we don't know it. Because we think that we can measure the spiritual things of God by our natural efforts and what we see. And that's confusion. We're called to live a life by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We have to learn to live a life by faith. That means that when you are used to uh, uh, dealing with your emotions and feelings, that now you have to counter that with something that you can't see. I told you my job is to equip you, right? Because every decision you make out of emotions, 99% of the time is wrong. And that's why we always, you know, I messed up again. 
Right, because you let, you let your emotions to rule your life instead of the spirit of the Lord who is in you. And by faith, you will make a decision that will probably kill you. Go kill the flesh. I don't want to do that. That's not fair. I'm not going to give that person that, the, the privilege. No, my friend, it's not you. It's you saying, if I hold things in my past and so on, I can never move forward. I can never uh, accomplish what God wants me to accomplish. But guess what? If I need to forgive, I'm going to forgive even though I don't feel like it. Hello? Anybody ever done that? Ooh, what a battle, baby. And your mind starts going all over the place. But you realize, I'm doing it by faith. I'm broke. I don't have nothing. But by faith, I believe I'm prosperous. And as soon as you say that, the last $2 that you had in the bank are gone. The giants. It's a purpose. Because how is God going to measure your faith unless you walk forward in the midst of a storm? How? Let me finish this. And then, and then we'll, we'll pray. I think we need some healing today. <laughs> For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Next verse. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed. Get over it guys. You listening by YouTube, get over it. He has forgiven you. You are who he says you are. You are you've been made in his image and his likeness. Now notice what the Bible says is the biggest fight. And Paul told Timothy, Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. That's the only fight you need to win. Don't fight neighbors, don't fight your, your boss, don't fight this, don't fight your spouse, don't fight your kids. Your biggest fight is the fight of faith. Because only faith can grab a hold of everything that God has for you. But when you start measuring yourself and thinking, I have to be this way or I have to be that way to get what God has for me, my friend, you missed it. Your past, mistakes, everything that perhaps you've experienced, again, does not define you. However, those things will mark your life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I can get saved tomorrow and be put into prison for something I did in my past. Are y'all here? Does God still love me? 100%. Am I still a son? 100%. Am I still in the grace? 100%. Except the judge ain't buying it. <laughs> Come on. And so we misinterpret it because I think if I'm saved, God better touch the judge. Oh, you know that. Lord, strike him dead. Do something. You know, yeah. Because after all, I'm a son. And we make the mistake that there are consequences to the things we do. But those consequences do not define you before God. And that's why Paul, while he was in prison, he prayed for those that put him in there. People got saved in prison because though he was in prison, prison wasn't in him. His identity was, I am free. Because as long as I keep looking at what's not fair 
It ain't fair. I got saved. I'm serving the Lord now. Well, the, 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 the disciples who never did anything wrong got beat and thrown into prison, let alone someone that does something wrong. But what happens is that transformation starts with you knowing, just like it says about Jesus, knowing where I came from, knowing that I have it all, I have no lack, and knowing that I'm going back. That's the beginning. Your life starts changing. Because every time you look in that mirror, man, you got a smile on your face because you see the glory of God, and that's you. And you say, Lord, I'm moving forward. I'm believing for miracles. And not because of who I am, but because of who you are. And some of us need miracles, and some of us need breakthroughs, and, and, and some of us need strongholds in our minds to be brought down. And God is more than happy to do that because he wants you to be who he created you to be. He doesn't want you to be defeated. He doesn't want you to, to have lack. That's not who our God is. So why don't you stand with me? So I told the Lord I was believing for miracles today. Miracles can happen in one of two ways. Sometimes someone will come, they'll lay hands on you and so on, and you will experience a miracle, maybe get healed and, and so on. And then there's the miracle that comes by faith in believing who you are, your identity. That's the greater battle. Because even your mind will mess with you. But when you can say, Lord, thank you that I am who you say I am. I am righteous in your sight. No matter what my past is, no matter what I've done, you love me. And you have given all things into my hands. Can you get it? I have it all. You don't have to give me anything. I have it. And now I must move in my identity. That's your image and your likeness. Right there, miracles happen. Because a miracle can happen where you walk out the door and you find $5,000. If that happens, know that was mine. You could, you could, you know, you can get a healing. And that's awesome. But the greatest healing that we need is here and here. Because a lot of the mistakes that we've made has been because we, we forgot who we were. Sometimes we make financial stuff that's terrible. Why? Because we forget who we are. Our prayers betray us because we're asking God to do something he has already done. But if you're believing God for a miracle like I am, and the Bible says any, any two agree, imagine more. That when you leave this place, that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt who you are. Sometimes we look for people to tell us who we are. If they tell you, man, you're awesome. They say, bro, you suck. And, huh, really? No, 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 no. Know who you are. If somebody doesn't like me, that's their problem. Jesus loves me. And you want to see a change in your life, he'll start doing it. You have to start here. Then he will progressively take you. You'll see the giants differently. You'll see the problems differently. You'll always remind yourself, Lord, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. If that's you and you're believing God for a miracle, yeah, this is it. You come out of your seat and you come up here. Because sometimes people say, why can't you just pray for me where I'm at? Stop being proud. You, you, you want a breakthrough, man. You should, you should want your breakthrough more than you want pride. 
But this message deserves a response. It was not my message. This was God speaking to us. And he doesn't speak to us for no reason. Because he knows exactly what we go through. He knows exactly the times that we lay in bed and we cry. Because of, of something that shouldn't happen or, or something that we want to happen. And he sees it and he knows it. And he, there, that's where he comes in and he starts speaking to us. And he starts telling us, I know what you're going through. Why, why is the altar important? Because you will see in the Bible that whenever people wanted to talk to God or receive from the Lord, they will build an altar. And that's what this represents. This is your altar right here. This is where you say, Lord, man, I, I need you. Lord, I, I, I've made the decision to embrace my true identity your image in your likeness. This is it right here. This is it right here. It also has to do with obedience. Why should you come up here? Because I ask you to. <laughs> I don't I, I'm not I don't get anything out of this. You know, I don't go like, oh, take some pictures right now, y'all. Take some pictures. Yeah. I'm not. Come on. If I ask you to do it, it's because I know that the Lord is saying obedience is better than sacrifice. For some of you, it's a step of faith to come up here. And that's what we want. Amen. Awesome. Look at all. You know what I see right now? I see the glory of God. I see the glory of God. Hmm. Just raise your hands. Come on, guys. God has spoken to you. This is the time to break with the past. This is the time to let go of everything you thought you were. The pain, the suffering. This is the time to let it all go and to declare in the name of Jesus my true identity is in you. Father, right now, I thank you. I thank you for your word. It's not the word of man. It's your word, the word of the living God. You brought it to us and you use me as someone to deliver it, but it's not mine, it's yours. And so therefore our faith is in you that the breakthroughs, the miracles, the strongholds that need to come down in your people, you will do it. You're doing it now. Holy Spirit is moving now in your midst, in your heart, in your mind. And he is saying, today you are free. Today you are who I say you are. Today you are my righteousness. I see you. And I see my son. I see you. And I see the blood of Christ. Today, you will receive everything that I have already given you. As you walk by faith and not by sight. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for total breakthroughs. Let every stronghold come down. Today, we declare that money jobs, everything is secondary you're first and when we put you first you release all those things that are already rightfully ours so I thank you for businesses that are going to boom I thank you Lord for people that are sick that are being healed right now because they are made in your image and your likeness Father I thank you for people that are struggling financially that there is a breakthrough right now Father in the name of Jesus we don't have to know how we don't have to figure out how you're going to do it we have the faith that you've already done it and we are going to walk in that faith we're going to believe in you Father I thank you for healing relationships 
Father, because only you can. Father, relationships that, that seem to be broken and, and misunderstood. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you will mend those relationships in the name of Jesus as only Holy Spirit can do. So we thank you, Father. We thank you and we thank you and we thank you for restoring our image in you. And when we leave this place, there'll be voices that will try to talk us out of it and voices that will try to say it nothing is going to change and I declare that that's a lie from the pit of hell because things are changing now in Jesus name in Jesus name now I'm going to ask you to give the Lord a great clap offering by faith amen amen and the second thing I'm going to ask you is find a way to spend time in the Word of God. Let it not be just a one day a week thing because God wants to speak to you. And this is what I found out. The more you read the Word, and don't overdo it. Like some, somebody will hear me right now and get the Bible. They want to read a whole chapter and you know a whole book. Don't do that. Just find yourself a few verses and, and just read that and meditate on it because the more you do that, the more your spirit will become alive in you from the word and when if you don't do that when you hear the voice the negative voice you'll get overwhelmed but if you do do it when you hear that voice there's going to be another voice that's coming from you spending time with the word and if you don't like to read get it on disc do something amen because then his voice will come up and I guarantee you his voice is always greater than the voice of the enemy. Amen? I love you guys. Don't forget who we are. Please, please bring somebody to church. Let, if, if you got ministered today, think about somebody that needs to be ministered as well. Amen? And if they're not saved, even better. Reach out. Amen? God bless you. Love you. And we will see you next Sunday.